on behalf of the EFD, Mr Helmer. Uh, well, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Minister, I have been asked to stand in for my colleague, uh, Mr Agnew. Um, you may well be relieved to note his absence, but I shall do my best to fill the gap. Uh, Mr Coveney, you have only six months to improve this dog's breakfast of a CAP reform proposal. Where is the simplification? It was promised, it was given as an objective, but it's now lost without trace. Where is the reduction in red tape? We have complex rules surrounding ecological focus areas and differentiating land managers from farmers and allowing double funding from taxpayers' money. How does this make life simpler or make the process more transparent? This is not really a reform at all. It is more of the same, but worse. And most disgraceful of all is Monsieur Dantin's crude protectionist anti-market stitch-up epitomised by his plans for sugar. Uh, Mr. Coveney, Chairman, UK and European consumers are paying nearly double the price they might for their sugar. Jobs in the UK and at other cane refineries in the EU will be lost. Mr. Agnew specifically asked me to raise, as he has done many times, the issue of the British company Tate and Lyle. He tells me that crucial questions he tabled on sugar reform on November the 28th last year remain unanswered. Will you please ensure that these issues are addressed promptly? The proposals before us today do nothing to solve these problems. At a time when food prices are rising, these proposals represent protectionist mismanagement of the market inflicted on the EU and on the UK for a further decade. I call on you, Mr Coveney, to use your presidency to bring some common sense to the reform, to ensure that at a time of rising prices and forecasts of food shortages, farmers are not held back by unjustified and perverse greening incentives, and to ensure that hard-working people in my country and the seven other member states with cane sugar refineries do not lose their jobs to old-fashioned protectionism. I look forward to your response. Thank you. Uh, and uh, finally, just on, uh, 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 on Roger's comments, uh, uh, um, I remember you fondly as well from the Parliament, Roger. You know, look, you and I come at this politically from a very different perspective in terms of the role of the European Union. In my view, there is a huge value to a common set of policies across the European Union around how we produce our food, how we protect our environment, how we protect rural communities and so on. And actually, the common agricultural policy is really the only comprehensive common policy uh, economically that has worked and continues to work, in my view. There are flaws to it. That's why we need to reform it and improve it. Uh, we need to simplify it. Um, uh, and we need to ensure that Europe remains competitive in sugar markets as well as other markets with other parts of the world and that we can take advantage from new markets that are growing and expanding outside of the European Union for trade and also balance that with an existing sugar industry that's there um, uh, that we need to, uh, to protect into the future. And Ireland knows all about sugar, let me tell you. Uh, but I, I, uh, I have to now speak uh, as a uh, as a chairman of the Council of Ministers, so I don't want to get into too much detail about my personal views on the sugar regime. Um, if I can give you answers on the Tate and Lyle, uh, um, I, I just don't have that detail, but uh, if you want, uh, uh, if I can help on that, uh, I'll certainly try, but I, I don't want to um, uh, over-promise in terms of what I can do there. Uh, this is uh, presumably um, uh, an issue that your colleague has with the Commission. Um, so look, that's, as, that's as, uh, as forthright as I can be, but um, I look forward to, to more questions. Thanks very much.